This is part two interactive ebooks of our digital sensory story time series. I am the presenter, Amy Price, Oakstone Academy librarian in Westerville, Ohio, and this series is sponsored by the State Library of Ohio. When we're talking about interactive ebooks in this series, we are talking about ebooks that have full color pictures. Um, full text and an audio read to me function. So those are the important features of an interactive ebook versus a non-interactive ebook. Um, there are different ways that ebooks can be interactive that might not include things like this, but for our purposes, that's how we're going to define an interactive ebook. Because we're working with individuals with autism, we want to make sure that they have those picture cues to rely on, that they have the text, um, hopefully highlighted a lot of the picture books that have been made into apps or ebooks have the highlighted text feature and the audio input because we are trying to overcome those sensory processing problems that they may be challenged with. So we want the information to be able to get in as many ways as possible so that we can be successful in overcoming those hurdles to getting information. It's important to understand why interactive ebooks are so useful with children with autism. Um, I think that individuals, typically developing individuals, are kind of in, entranced by it. Teenagers definitely are pulled to technology, but you know, it's kind of like a new toy and that that novelty wears off and then it's just not so exciting anymore. And I think it's important to understand that for children with autism and individuals with autism, there are actually some benefits that can be gained from the digital environment. Because they're experiencing those sensory processing problems, the digital environment is more repetitive and can help that information overcome those sensory processing problems. So each time that I speak, then my tone is different, my pitch is different, the speed which I say the words is different. So I may be saying the same word over and over and over again, but because all of those nuances may be over-processed by the individual with autism, they may actually think that I am saying a different word than the word that I was saying before. And that creates a situation where they are having trouble processing the, the auditory information where they're, that they're getting. So what we wanna do is use the computer or a digital device, particularly with the mobile devices, it's a lot easier to hold that like a book these days and let that read it to them so that we don't have those changes in pitch and speed and volume and all of that that as humans we can't control. So even if I'm going to make a custom sensory story time social story that's going to tell them everything that we're going to do and I'm going to record my own voice, um, that is still going to be, they're going to process that as the same time, the same thing each time they play it. So it's important to understand the actual advantages that digital stories have with individuals with autism and why they may be more drawn to that environment because it is saying the same thing in exactly the same tone and pitch and everything each time and then they're able to process that better instead of trying to work with that human element which is going to be different each time you work with it. And that is the reason that I am a proponent of using the interactive ebooks with in the sensory story times and with individuals with autism. We actually did take a look at this at our school to see if this held true when we tried to test the students and see if there really was an advantage over a print book and an ebook when working with a child with autism with 
significant impairments. So I'm going to talk about the results of that study and what we learned from that in just a few minutes. But before I go into that, I would like to show you an example of an interactive ebook so that you can understand what it is we're talking about and see how the picture books work in this interactive environment. It is very different from just a scanned page of a book that looks exactly like a print book, but it's on a device, so maybe it's neat or more mobile. This is actually a different format that can help individuals with autism have access to that information that you're trying to give them in story time. Look at Green Eggs and Ham by Ocean House Media. You see when you do the read to me. Sam. that you have the highlighted text and you have the full color illustrations and you have the audio component. Now one of the things that you might want to do is turn off the background noise and you see under options you have the hear sound effects option. So if you turn that off then you won't get the background uh, music which is very distracting to some of the children. You also have the option to have tap on pictures turned on or tap on pictures turned off. And what that will do is allow you to tap on the wall and have it say the word wall and show you the word wall. Hat. And you can do this with anything on the screen. What you want to watch for is sometimes children with autism will want to just tap continually to get a noise and to get that visual effect instead of using it appropriately. So there is the option of turning it off if that becomes a problem, but it can also be a great activity for reinforcing the word and reinforcing it with the print and the audio together. In 2010, we were awarded an LSTA grant administered by the State Library of Ohio in order to take a look at three groups of students with autism and see if the interactive ebooks that were available on the iPad would make a difference for them. So they were gracious enough to let us do this study and help us get 10 iPads that we could use in it and some ebooks that had the interactive features. So they had the print, they had the auditory, the reading aloud, they had the full color pictures, and we could combine all those and see does this help with access for information for individuals with autism, particularly individuals with autism that are behind in reading. So we took 10 middle schoolers, 10 high schoolers, and 10 students over the age of 18 because individuals with an IEP can stay into school in school until the age of 21, then we have quite a few students in that 18 to 21 year old range. Now all of these students were at least four grade levels behind in reading because we wanted to make sure that we were looking at individuals that were having a barrier to information. So individuals that couldn't access the print information in the traditional way that their peers would. And we wanted to see if the interactive ebooks on the iPad would be able to overcome some of that challenge to accessing information. Some of the things that we weren't sure about were the distractibility of the device. If the device wasn't playing a movie, would it make them angry? Would there be some downsides to this format or would it simply be overwhelming to have the full color pictures and the audio going and the highlighted text? Would those would that just impede it even more by making it so that that sensory processing system was just overwhelmed? So we took these 30 students and we asked each of them to answer a set of comprehension questions after reading a traditional print book 
and we did that activity twice and then we ask each of them to answer a set of comprehension questions after reading listening to an interactive ebook and we did that activity twice to try and get a baseline for is it helpful to have the book in this format one of the things that is interesting about autism is having all of the senses be impaired. So if you are a blind person, then obviously listening to an audiobook is going to overcome that disability as far as your access to information is concerned. But if you're a child with autism, you may have overprocessing or underprocessing in the visual format, you may have over or under in the auditory format. So just having an audiobook doesn't necessarily overcome that access to information for an individual with autism that is behind in reading. It obviously eliminates the reading portion of the book, but that doesn't mean that they're processing the auditory input any better than they were processing the print input. So we had found that in our library that solutions like that were pretty limited in who they could help. And we wanted to see if putting all of these elements together in an interactive ebook would be more beneficial to these individuals. We were very pleased with the results that we got. We saw that all of the students that used the interactive ebook showed an increase in comprehension. So there weren't any students that actually did worse on the interactive ebook comprehension questions than they did on the traditional print book questions. So this was very encouraging because it was showing us that this wasn't going to be detrimental for any of the individuals with autism. We saw an average of a 21% increase in the middle school group in their being able to answer these comprehension questions. They're accessing this information, a 25% increase in the high school group and a 21% increase in students ages 18 to 21. So these were exciting results and we were kind of getting the same um, percentages out of each group in the same range there. So that was exciting for us to actually have something show that not only does it have the possibility of increasing the comprehension and increasing that access to information, but it also does not appear to have the possibility of decreasing it for one individual student. So with these very exciting results that showed us that this really does make a difference for individuals with autism, we started to look at who makes these interactive eBooks, how many are available, where are they available. We were primarily working with the iPad because the iPad has a lot of communication apps available and that is a huge need in our school and they kind of have the corner on the communication apps so that was primarily the device that we worked with but most of the developers that have been developing these interactive ebooks um, now have them available in the, the ipad or the android tablet format so Ocean House Media is one of the developers that we have grown to really appreciate their work. And Ocean House Media does the Dr. Seuss books, Little Critters, the Bernstein Bears, by Little Monkeys, a lot of the books that students are familiar with and that you probably already use in your individual story times. So we obviously would buy them from the Apple Store, but they are also available in the Android market. So they're available regardless of which device it is that your library chooses to go with. And they have some interactive features that we saw earlier that are particularly nice um, as far as being able to touch a mountain and it's saying the word mountain or hill, a touch a house and it showing you the word house and having that auditory piece. So not all of the interactive ebooks have um, little features like that, but they all have the full color illustrations. They all have the highlighted text 
and they all have some of these more traditional books that we're used to using. So if you have a story time that is already centered around one of Dr. Seuss's books and, and you do that, you know, every time Dr. Seuss's birthday rolls around, then it's not terribly difficult for you to convert that and use the digital interactive ebook instead of the traditional print book when you do your digital sensory story time. So that was exciting for us and obviously this market is growing and growing and growing but just to help you get started and show you that some of the books that you're used to are available in this format we're going to look at a couple of different developers. And again, these are just examples. They are certainly not an exhaustive list of everything that is available in the interactive ebook format. But um, iStoryTime also has a lot of your traditional books and they do a lot of the movie books, which can be popular with a lot of the children that you work with when one of the new movies comes out that everybody has seen and they're all excited about. They have some of those characters, the Smurfs, Barney, some of those characters that perhaps your children in your story time have been exposed to in the media are available through iStoryTime. Another great developer that is out there is Nosy Crow and you see some of their titles here are titles that you're used to seeing and stories that you're very familiar with and they actually developed one of the storybook apps that was named a top app by ALA and I will show you that link on the next screen. But what we're hoping that you see in the last few slides is that a lot of the materials that you're familiar with working with are now available in the interactive ebook format. And a lot of them, like I said, are available in both the Apple market and the Android market. So just because you have one tablet or the other, it doesn't mean that you're completely limited. Now, obviously not every print book is available in an interactive ebook format, but they are becoming more and more available every day. And a lot of the familiar titles are there and a few that maybe you would think would not be there. So hopefully this gives you a starting place for where to go to take a look at what developers are out there and what developers, what titles those developers are doing. As I mentioned, Nosy Crow developed one of the books that was named in the Best Apps for Teaching and Learning 2013. This is a new list that has come out by the American Association of School Libraries under ALA. So this is a very exciting development that we're starting to see in the library community that people are looking at apps and they're looking at which ones are the best, very similar to the way that they look at what, what is the best picture book, what is the best print book out there. They're starting to try to have some professionals take a look at these interactive ebooks and other apps that are for teaching and learning and really saying, so which ones are the best or which ones do we think have some outstanding qualities that we would like to make sure everyone knows about. And you can access that list through this link. When I first started looking for apps, I was very challenged by iTunes. I often joke that iTunes needs a librarian and how much I wish there was Mark Record data behind that search that you can do there. It's very limited what you can do search-wise and the information that's available about the app itself is very limited. It's pretty much whatever the developer wants to put on the site, so they may not be telling you all of the information that you're particularly interested in, especially when you're looking for a particular type of app like the interactive ebooks. So I looked at a lot of blogs. Um, one of the blogs that is particularly good is Moms with Apps. There's a little description there of how they started out. And they are primarily obviously for parents, but do a good job of some descriptions and pointing out 
particular features that are coming out. They have a sale every Friday. Um, and a lot of the parents at our school follow this blog to find out what the latest apps are, particularly for individuals with disabilities. They have an area that's specific to that. So unfortunately, right now, that's kind of where we are with the cataloging, if you will, of some of these things. But Moms with Apps is a great blog or any blogs like that that might help you find what you're looking for.